Linear haptic transducers are basically big weights that you attach to a motor and then you plug that into an amp, you plug that amp into some sound system and you can get basically force feedback, you can feel the bass in things like movies and music and video games and whatever you want. So Butt Kicker is a company that produces such devices. One of their products is this, the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. What makes it gamer is that it's got this mounting mechanism here that's specifically designed to attach to the pneumatic lift on like an office chair or realistically speaking, a sick gamer chair. That's a pretty bad gamer chair. Don't buy that gamer chair. And I've had this thing for a while. It's pretty sick, gotta say. But it eventually broke and I put off trying to fix it for years. The problem is this quick release cable. Now you can see it's just, you know, tethered in there. It stopped getting a good connection to the amp at some point. Very recently I tried fixing it, just splicing stupid connectors onto the end that did work, except now it seems like after sitting and gathering dust for however many years, the amp has stopped working. And so I could have tried to fix this too, realistically speaking, but eh, I bought a new butt kicker. I bought the Butt Kicker Gamer Pro. And that's what this video is. It's about the cool new butt kicker. That's the power of having a dumb second channel for dumb videos that no one wants. I can make you watch me unbox things. See, actually normally I wouldn't unbox things with a knife. I would usually just sort of rip them open, but I'll save y'all from having to watch me do that. Look, there's a box inside the box. Who'd have thunk? Butt Kicker Gamer Pro. Now what makes it pro compared to the non-pro butt kickers? I think it's slightly larger. Uh, that's the main difference. Uh, and it comes with some software, it comes with an owner's manual, and it comes with a lot of foam. Here we go. So, oh lord. It's bigger. <laughs> I, I knew it would be bigger than the old one, but it's, it, it might be too big. I may have made a mistake. I don't, I don't, I don't, it, it's very big. It's very large. Anyway, what else makes it throw? It's got a new amp. It's bigger than the old, actually is it? It's slightly bigger than the old amp, but it's got digital displays and, and stuff now, so that's cool. Um, it can connect over USB. It should be a, uh, see this is the new quick release cable, which will hopefully hold up better than the old one. You can see it's got this sort of flanged, flanged, that is not in front of the camera at all. Sort of, is it gonna focus? I'm not used to doing live video. Yeah, that sort of flange design. So hopefully it'll get better contact than the old one. But even if this cable fails, it's now just got, you know, standard speaker connectors. You can um, connect speaker wire if need be. Uh, okay, one of these, uh, that's the other half of the quick release cable, that's a power cable. This is a box with things in it, presumably. Can I knife it open? I can. Wow, power of knives. Who'd have thought? That's got uh, the RCA cable in there if you're gonna connect it in an analog fashion. Uh, but using their software, you can just connect with USB? Is that a USB cable? Oh yeah, there's USB in there as well. And it's got a wireless remote. Okay, enough unboxing. Uh, I'll let you know when it's all set up. And here it is hooked up. Maybe I'll turn the flash on. Ooh, look at that. So you got the big honking butt kicker itself just strapped onto the uh, hydraulic lift of the sick gamer chair there. Uh, then that's got the quick release cable coming off of it. Uh, they give you these cable ties, which I guess you're meant to like strap it to the leg of the chair. I don't really know. 
Um, anyway, that is, as they say, a quick release cable, which is kind of necessary, of course, because you now have a thing with a cable coming off of it, sitting on a thing that, that turns and has wheels and so on and so forth. So the old quick release cable was, you know, not very good. Obviously, it, mine broke. Uh, this one seems very robust. It's hard to even separate with one hand, which is maybe a bad sign if it's supposed to be a quick release cable. Hold on. Ah, there we go. Look at that. That is a, a solid electrical connection right there. If it'll focus. If it'll focus. There we go. That is a solid electrical connection right there. Uh, very unlikely for that to deteriorate deteriorate in my opinion anyway that goes into the amp i i hit the stop recording button I, i'm not very good at this whole live vlogging thing uh the amp anyway has two more cables coming off of it the uh USB C that goes into the computer although obviously again you could also do a an analog connection if you so desired and then it's just got wall power and that's it and that that's kind of the beauty of the butt kicker gamer specifically, is you just get this all-in-one, you know, system. You don't have to buy any weird mounting hardware or anything. You just pay some money, this thing shows up in a box, and you can mount it directly to your sick gamer chair, because who doesn't have a sick gamer chair uh, these days? Okay, let's play some video games. Well, before I get to the video games, just one quick example of it working with music. So obviously it's a bit hard to convey the sense of vibration through a YouTube video. But you can see on the amp, the, uh, the signal light is, is flashing uh, whenever there's a bass sound coming through. You can see that's flashing to the beat of the, the music. And so that correlates to when the actual bass shaker... I don't know if I get like real close to it or if I put the phone on it. Okay, that either sounded like something or, or sounded like absolutely nothing. Anyway, you can see you have like these knobs to adjust the, um, the low pass filter. You've got volume, of course, if you want it to be. Yeah, get to the point where it starts clipping. Obviously, you don't want that. And there's a remote. And then, yeah, when you get these long sustained bass notes, it's just constantly <laughs> rumbling. Okay, let's play a video game. So, I feel like the real target demographic for the butt kicker is people who like racing sims. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a poor man's motion rig, right? And with the uh, kind of awful uh, butt kicker have to connect software, you can actually directly connect to the telemetry output of various games. And so you can, rather than going off sound, you know, it'll be like, oh, your engine is revving, let's get some rumble. Again, like what a motion rig would do. So, you know, I'm not the biggest sim racing guy, but figure I'll give it, I'll give that a shot. Uh, but obviously, if we're going for immersion here, there's some pieces we need. So one, we got the butt kicker. Uh, definitely another important part of immersion in a racing game, in a sim racer, is the racing wheel. So we're all hooked up there as well. But what about... The visuals. How do we get immersive visuals? And I feel like for most people, the gold standard in immersive visuals is VR. But, you know, I'm not the biggest... Like, I like, B I like VR, but I have really bad depth perception. And so I feel like I don't get as much out of VR as most people do. So instead, what I think I would prefer would be a sick multi-monitor, you know, triple monitor setup. And you know what? I've got... One stupidly big TV that I'm using as a monitor. I've got another stupidly big TV that I'm using as a monitor. But what I don't have is enough desk space for a third stupidly big TV to use as a monitor. So, you know what that means? It means we get to improvise a little bit. And with just a touch of magic uh, from the NVIDIA control panel, we can set up a lovely 
12K uh, stupid ultra wide <laughs> NVIDIA surround setup. Now, my hope is that Project Cars 2 is an old enough video game uh, that my poor 3080 might be able to play it at this kind of resolution. Uh, let's see how that goes. This is pretty cool. Uh, it works surprisingly well. Even you know, probably if I was going to use this more often, I would want to like tweak the camera settings a bit more. All I've really done here is just up the the default FOV, uh, but it definitely is a pretty immersive experience. And especially combining the the force feedback from the wheel with the. Um, the rumble from the butt kicker tied to the actual in-game telemetry. And the whole thing's, you know, it's only like low graphics settings, but it's running perfectly smoothly at a 12K like this. So it's overall, again, not a sim racer, don't expect anything, uh, any good performance out of me. Excuse me, mister. Oh look, let's get, let's get back to the track here. Uh, it's definitely pretty sick. I could see myself spending a good amount of time. Actually, probably you can hear my chair uh, rumbling from the uh, the butt kicker being turned up so loud. Now, if I like actually put my arms on the uh, on the armrests, that does uh, alleviate most of that that rattling sound. But you can hopefully you can hear that just to get a sense of like the way the the telemetry in the game is actually tying into the um, the rumble of of the butt kicker, and yeah, the stupid ultra wide uh, is is pretty great. Even though again, it's not uh, the most optimized like camera setup. Like I've got, I've got part of my car's frame right. On. I think that's what you want. I think right is to have the the frame of the car line up with the bezels of the screen. And I, I kind of got it on that side, but over here the other car pillar is like going that way. Uh, it's not it's not the best. And these um. Project cars like it's it supports triple monitor settings, but I don't know if like you need to change the settings or something because these menus are not really designed with a triple monitor setup in mind. Uh, but anyway, racing games, driving sims are not actually the thing that tempted me to buy a butt kicker. What did was Thumper, the self-described rhythm violence game so this is a rhythm game definitely not going to be able to talk and play or probably even play competently in front of a camera at all um so i'm mostly just going to let thumper happen here and you'll get to see my mediocre gameplay uh, i realized it's probably not the best way to capture thumper with my phone camera and the phone microphone just picking up everything uh so you know Hopefully this gives you the sense of playing Thumper with the stupid ultra-wide setup and the butt kicker and the rumbly controller and everything, but you probably want to just play Thumper yourself. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and, and let Thumper happen.
to see the dying effect there. just play this all day. I might. Uh, but anyway, that's Thumper with the stupid ultra wide and, and the butt kicker. I don't know quite how well the, the sense of bass that you get out of Thumper is conveyed over the, the phone <laughs> microphone. Uh, if need be, just go on Steam, watch the trailer of Thumper with like a nice sober phone. Oh god, it's... it's, it's... Anyway, I think Thumper works really well with the ultra wide because it's like all the gameplay is right there in the center of the screen. And like most of the time, these two side screens are just completely black with just like, you know, some particle effects like splashing out over them. But then occasionally you get one of those like really big effects, like when you get hit or you like hit a big note or something that just fills your entire field of view with just these, these super bright <laughs> over the top effects. It's super cool. And then, you know, the rumble of the controller combined with the rumble from the butt kicker and then the, the, the kick of the bass from the subwoofer. It's great. Highly recommended. You know, go out and buy three stupid big TVs and a butt kicker uh, just to play Thumper. I can definitely recommend that. Uh, but anyway, one more game I want to try. And speaking of games that work well with rumble, Tetris Effect. <laughs> so if you don't know the cool thing Tetris Effect does, is in addition to having your you know primary controller that can rumble it also lets you connect additional secondary controllers which will also rumble along with you know the music and effects and stuff in the game and i actually don't know how well you'll be able to see the screen with the phone camera i was looking back at that thumper footage you couldn't really see super well but whatever this is a second channel video uh, but you can see hopefully see they have this option uh, in the settings, you have vibration and then secondary vibration. So I've rounded up a bunch of controllers here. Tragically, I do have five controllers, but the game only supports four. Um, I spent a while messing with DS4 Windows to see if there was some way to like map two controllers to the same controller. Maybe I'll figure that out someday. 
Uh, but for now, we've got we've got four controllers. You might notice uh, these are like all wired. Um, Freaking Windows. I don't know if it's like Windows, if it's some setting I need to change, if it's like the Bluetooth controller on my motherboard is just like crap. Uh, but I can never get multiple wireless controllers to stay connected. I've got one wireless controller that works perfectly fine. But as soon as you try to do two controllers, or you know, heaven forbid, five controllers. Um, it's gonna be a bad time. They just start disconnecting. I was seeing some things just like you can tweak the power settings. It's just like anytime you want to like sit down and play a multiplayer game with people, it's like oh, I need to spend ten hours getting controllers to work properly. It's like okay, let's just buy this game on PS4 <laughs> or Switch or something, and then the controllers will just work. Anyway, the rest of this video is just gonna be me playing Tetris Effect, uh, probably pretty poorly. Although it is the the early game levels because I don't have a save here on PC. Um, uh, but first I need to strategically arrange these controllers across my body, which is the central conceit of Tetris Effect. So you've got the, the controller, I don't even know how well you'd be able to see me if I recline fully, but you've got your, your controller that you're actually holding, and then you just place other controllers at strategic locations, you know, maybe like on your legs and then on your chest or something. I don't even know if the camera can see this. Um, but I'm now covered in controllers. I've seen some people suggest you could like put a controller like on your neck or something. I feel like that would probably, it'd be hard to keep it positioned there, but that would probably work pretty well. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to play Tetris Effect now because it's a freaking awesome video game. Maybe if I scooch forward more, you can at least see the lights from the controllers or something. Um, this is another game that's hard to uh, talk while you play, but again, hopefully the fact that we're on the early, easy baby levels means it's not so bad. Now, when I was I was trying out Tetris Effect with the, the triple screen earlier, I was like, oh man, does this game even support uh, triple screen? I don't know, I, you'd think it would. Um, it's, a, it's a slow burn, this game. Let me see if any, yeah, let's, yeah, you can see some of the particle effects now. Uh, slipping, making their way, uh, yeah, like I said, I can't talk and do this. In fact, even the controllers aren't, like, rumbling at all yet. Like, this game is such a slow, like, a slow, gradual build-up every single level. That's what's kind of so great about it. Is every level you start out and you're like, eh, is that it? <laughs> but then, you know, as it progresses, it just gets more and more, um, Intense. And again, this, again, don't expect any sort of high-level Tetris gameplay from me here. I like got half decent at Tetris by virtue of playing through Tetris Effect, because uh, it kind of forces you to, even on normal difficulty, on the later levels. I got the, this is the controller that's rumbling. This is the fifth one. That doesn't count as a real controller. There we go. Now I've got the full... Wait, which... This is my... This is the controller. Oh, whoops, I entered the zone. I didn't mean to do that. Quick, let's do zone things. Okay, that was not a very good use of my zone power. Uh, anyway, I'm not that good at Tetris, is what I'm trying to say. I can, like, kind of hold my own. Again, I beat Tetris Effect. Once upon a time, so that's something. Anyway, you can see as this uh, level progresses, it's yeah, right, right on the chest. That's that's where you can really feel the vibrations. And of course, don't forget we've got the butt kicker going as well. That's what this video is in theory about. Anyway, cool. Yeah, one thing that always puzzled me a little bit about Tetris Effect is like how small the, the game board is by default. I mean, if you're playing on a normal TV or like at a normal distance, uh, it does feel kind of small. This game really feels like it's designed for this kind of setup. Okay, you're sitting stupidly close to a far too big TV, and then you've also just got two additional TVs 
on either side. You have four controllers resting precariously on various parts of your body. And you've got Space Shaker shaking your entire chair along with the music. This is video gaming. And I am almost certainly going to play through all of Dedrick's Effect again like this. I need to find a better place to mount this controller. It keeps trying to slip away. Maybe I should put it behind my neck. You got one person on Reddit suggesting. Uh, interestingly, I didn't plan it out this way, but all three of the games that I've shown off so far, Project Cars, um, Thumper, no, Tetris Effect, they're all games that support VR just as like a way to be more immersive or whatever, but then I think it are way cooler like this with a sick uh, multi-monitor setup. Anyway, I'm gonna mostly shut up now and just play Tetris. Welcome to the second channel. You get, you get quality here. Tetris effect again, so I can get good at Tetris. Again, I should play an expert mode. That'll be that'll really push me. I've never won at Tetris 99, so make of that what you will. So uh, that's you see, this level is one of the ones that's like I feel like purposely they make it hard to see. That's part of the challenge. I mean, you can go into the settings and like disable all the weird block effects and stuff if you just want boring ass colored Tetris blocks. It's like if you're doing that, why are you playing Tetris Effect? You know? This game is meant to fuck with you. Is my take on Tetris Effect. And like, hey, if you don't want to get fucked with, it's like, okay, that's, that's fine. I shouldn't have put that there, probably. It's just gonna cause trouble for me later. But whatever, again, these are the easy baby levels. I am not particularly concerned about my performance on them. If I do manage to die on the easy baby levels, uh, you are allowed to make fun of me. See, that bell ends up becoming like a Pavlovian sort of thing. Because the bell indicates, you know, you're getting to the next stage in this level, which usually means it's getting faster. I mean, that's the cool thing about Tetris Effect. One of the many cool things about Tetris. I mean, look at this. It's <laughs> talking about cool things about Tetris Effect. Um, like most Tetris games, they just get you know faster and faster and faster. Uh, the cool thing about Tetris Effect, from the gameplay perspective, is like, it doesn't do that. It, you know, each level is, you know, scripted, I guess is what you would call it. It's authored. That's the word I'm looking for. It's authored. So it'll get faster, but then also, you know, get slower. It'll give you a, a reprieve. Um, and so that bell, you know, indicates, it's like, oh, shit's about to get, you know, awful. Or, you know, hey, it's time to um, relax a bit. Uh, obviously on these easy baby levels, like you can barely even perceive the difference in the uh, speed settings. But once you start getting to uh, some of the late game stuff, again, even on normal difficulty, like I, I did not play this game on expert. I can only imagine um, some of the, the visceral reactions that you develop playing Tetris Effect on uh, Expert difficulty uh, whenever you hear that bell go off. And you know, again, this is one of those games that, like, if you're actually good at, you can make look really cool. Uh, again, 
all that to say that I'm not good at Tetris. I, 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 don't, I shouldn't say not good. Again, you can, you, can, you can watch me play. You can make your own judgments on my Tetris capabilities. Okay, that, that took me way too long to realize where that was supposed to go, and it was too late to do anything about it. That tells you, I think, everything you need to know about my Tetris abilities. Oops. I shouldn't go there. Whatever, this is the last stage of this next section. Oh boy, I really don't have a place to put that. Oh, that actually worked out. See, that, that's what I feel like it's like if you're good at Tetris, you can spot things like that where it's like it looks like there's no good place to put that, but then you realize, like, oh, if I put it there, it'll clear, you know, such and such line, and then it'll actually, like, do good things for me. That was the coolest thing when I, I made a, a Tetris bot once upon a time. I, I might have tweeted it. I should dig. I should make a video about that on my cool second channel where I can post, you know, all my dumb half finished projects that aren't worth making videos about. Uh, but I made a Tetris bot that like can actually play, you know, Puyo Puyo Tetris on the Switch with like controller input and stuff, like my Mario Odyssey bots using that same system. Um, anyway, that was just like a very basic bot. It just did some like, you know, very basic sort of like look ahead stuff, trying to figure out the, the best place to put a piece. Um, but, like it would sometimes surprise me, you know, even just looking like two turns ahead with like some of the, the ways it would place pieces, anticipating, like, hey, once this next piece comes, I'm going to be able to, you know, even though this looks bad, I'm going to be able to clear it with my next piece. I hope it was clear the point I was making. It was like, the bot was good at that, and I was bad at, like, recognizing when the bot was doing that until after it had already done it. And so it was surprising. I mean, boo. I got a boo. I'm gonna play one more set of levels in Tetris Effect just because uh, I think it, I think it's this one. The last level in the second set is like my favorite level in Tetris Effect. Although you do have to get through some of the boring ones. The boring ones. How tragic. No. Yeah, I, I say the boring ones. This this one's fun. They're all they're all good. There's no like bad levels in Tetris Effect. Yeah, we spicy. I'll put that there. And then it's it's clear. See, I I anticipated that. Actually, you can increase the piece. Look at it. I don't know if you can do that in the middle. Yeah, next to you. you can you can up that real high. I don't know if that's gonna like take effect immediately. Hey, yeah, there you go. So like, if you're good at Tetris, you can look at the uh, you know end piece. Look ahead and be like, oh, this is what piece is coming up three from now. What I wanted to do for my Tetris bot was make something that could play the, like, I forget what it's even called, the, like, super fast master mode here in Tetris Effect. Of course, the problem with making a bot that's playing Tetris just based off the visuals when you have a game like Tetris Effect. <laughs> like, Puyo Puyo Tetris already had enough particle effects that it was, like, and, and various effects and stuff that it was causing some issues for my bot trying to recognize like the pieces coming up and <laughs> trying to do that with Tetris effect. Again, I, I realize I'm recording this with a phone camera and it is probably not capturing super well the actual like in super good fidelity the these visuals, but I'm hoping what it, it can at least capture is the effect that the visuals have and, and the um, effect of having the, the, the dummy thick screens. I mean, I don't even know what the point of this video is. Is it, is it to sell you on stupid multi-monitor setups and butt kickers and stuff? Maybe. If you have disposable income to waste, this is a pretty good way to waste it. 
I think is the conclusion of this video. Oh yeah, see, this, this level's pretty. Now that it's got the, now that my butt is being kicked, I have more appreciation for this level. Again, I feel like the phone camera might, is probably not picking up on the bass super well thing, and I've only actually reviewed any of this footage on the phone itself, where there's no bass basically at all. So I don't know. When I, I did that, um, the chat GPT plays Pokemon video and I recorded those parts on my phone. Yeah, the audio quality was like not, it sounded fine on the phone, but then you listen to it on the computer and it's like, oh, this doesn't sound great. Uh, but whatever, that, that's what you get with the second channel. I can afford to be lazy on the second channel. There are no expectations of quality here. If you're coming here expecting quality, you're making a mistake. This is very bright. I knew this level was coming. I knew it would be bright, but I, I, I had forgotten that it's coming like right now. This kind of hurts to look at after being in the dark for so long. I can't even imagine what the phone, like, uh, auto contrast and stuff. I mean, I, I don't even know if it can see this screen at all. Tetris Effect? I am. Tetris Effect. That's a video game. It is one of the best video games. Especially when, since they added the, uh, the multiplayer stuff to it. Gives it some... That's... I... Pretend that piece isn't there. I don't know what I was thinking.
also do feel like the uh, the dual sense controllers aren't shaking as much as the uh, dual shock is. Obviously, this game. Well, I mean, obviously, there are different types of, of rumble modes. The, the dual sense is more like a butt kicker. Whereas the dual shock is you know, the more traditional just weight attached to a motor. Um, of course, it's all going through like. PS4 Windows anyway, this game doesn't support PlayStation controllers. Oh yeah, the one thing that is missing with this setup is HDR support. This game does support HDR. Uh, and in theory, all three of these monitors... Monitors? All three of these TVs support HDR. Uh, realistically speaking, the OLED's the only one that actually can back up that claim with, you know, luminance. Um, there, I'd be curious to see if there is some way to get HDR with an NVIDIA surround setup. I mean, NVIDIA surround is already janky enough, but it's in the same menu in the NVIDIA control panel where you can configure a dedicated physics card, which is still a thing that you could do. You could, I could go out right now, buy an RTX 4090, and configure it in the uh, NVIDIA control panel to act as a dedicated physics card. Uh, so yeah, that tells you perhaps about how long it has been since NVIDIA has thought about NVIDIA Surround as a feature. I mean, whatever, they have those, like, what are they? The, like, grid GPUs that are designed for, like, big, you know, like, Jumbotron-style, like, advertising displays and stuff that are, you know, made up of multiple displays. Like, they have GPUs that are designed specifically for that purpose. So, I mean, whatever, NVIDIA... I don't know what point I'm trying to make. Point is, this is not a thing people do very often, but maybe they should. This is the first part in the game where it gets like noticeably faster. And I immediately fuck up while trying to explain how it's still easy. <laughs> that was the point I was trying to make. Uh, as long as you're coming in with a you know clean enough well. It doesn't take, uh, it doesn't really benefit as much from the uh, multi-monitor setup, turns out. All the cool stuff is mostly happening in the middle. Oh, uh, whatever. Okay. There. Against my better judgment. Whatever, I just need to clear four more lines, and then we're out of here. That's easy. Just like that. I hope this is still recording. I didn't actually check to see how long it's set to record. Okay, that's Tetris Effect. And Thumper and Project Cars and the Butt Kicker and the concept of multi-monitor setups and... I don't know, I just wanted to make a video. 
where I play with my dumb toys that I waste my money on. Bye! I need, need to stop it recording now. Oh good, it is still recording. Okay, bye!